Good evening and welcome to this special online debate for the Lincolnshire Police and Crime Commissioner. In one week, you can vote for who you want to do that job here in the county. And over the next few minutes, we're going to introduce you to the five people who want that job, who want to be the next Police and Crime Commissioner for Lincolnshire. Feel free to get involved in the comment section as we go uh, along. Uh, thank you to our friends at the Lincolnite, who we are jointly again uh, putting this on together with. Now, normally, of course, we would be in some kind of venue, some kind of hall. We'd all be behind podiums. And that's the way we're used to doing a debate, isn't it? Obviously, because of the restrictions, it's a little bit different. So everybody is joining us remotely. Hopefully, though, you'll still get a flavour of what the candidates uh, are hoping to do if they're elected, if they get your vote, and what their plans are for the future, should they be successful. We'll introduce you to the candidates in a moment. Uh, but first, let's try and explain a little bit more about the role. You, you might have heard of a police and crime commission, but you might be a little bit confused about exactly what they do. So with big, big apologies to Line of Duty, here's how the police and crime commissioner role works. Operation PCC. That's police and crime commissioner. TBSH. The book stops here. PCCs are the face of the force. They make sure the public has faith in it, they're elected and they're accountable. AIO, all in order. PCCs have to make sure the force is AIO, that it's solvent and efficient. OID, object identifier. Whether it's cutting RTAs, road traffic accidents, AABC, action against business crime, Miss PERS, missing persons, SIs, special investigations, it's up to the PCC to set the priorities. CC, Chief Constable. Police and crime commissioners hire and fire the chief constables, the top cop in the force. GMTM, give me the money. PCCs decide how much taxpayers will be charged and tell the force how much it has to spend. So that gives you a little flavour of what the PCC does. Uh, let's bring in our BBC Radio Lincolnshire political reporter, Sharon Edwards, to put a bit more meat on the bones. Obviously, we borrowed a few phrases there in the spirit mm. of line of duty. But but in effect, what does the, the PCC do, Sharon? Because they're not getting involved in day to day crime fighting. They're not going to head up a murder inquiry, are they? No, they, they were brought in to replace police authorities, uh, which was thought by the then government to be uh, too anonymous, too unaccountable to the public. So they are the public face of the force. And indeed, it's their job to give the public a voice. Um, but they're also there to make sure that the police force runs smoothly, that it remains solvent. They set the what are called strategic priorities, which is basically just a lot of jargon to say they tell the force the areas of policing and crime that they want to concentrate on, whether that's rural crime or um, scams, that kind of online grooming, whatever it is. And of course, most importantly, Scott, they decide how much money we pay in our council tax for policing. The money, the bit of the council tax that goes direct to the force, that is set by the PCC. And in terms of how we vote, when we go to the polls, if we go next Thursday, or people may have done this already with a postal vote, it's a different type of voting, the way we vote for the Police and Crime Commissioner, isn't it? Yeah, it's called a supplementary voting system, and it just basically means that you get two votes. So you get to vote for your first preference candidate, but you, you also get to vote for your second preference candidate. And the reason that system was chosen is because it was believed that it would give um, more public support to whoever won. So basically, um, obviously, as I said before, the then government brought them in uh, 10 years ago uh, because it decided that the police authorities were too anonymous. So it believed that this voting system, somebody would be voted in who has not only received first preference votes but so but also second preference votes so that more people would feel oh i actually um, voted for them and have more buy into the whole system Sherry, you've now got an important job we're going to hear the opening statements from the five candidates uh, in a moment each of them have got uh, 60 seconds uh, to tell us why 
you, they think you should vote for them in the election next week. So we thought mm. the fairest way to do that was to draw a, a lot. So you have a trusty bucket for the order. And then what we will do, here's a BBC Radio Lincolnshire seaside bucket. Very exciting there. As you can see. <laughs> uh, Bit cold which, for the seaside who, today. Who knows? We'll be taking to Skegness at the weekend, mm. bank holiday uh, weekend. But um, we're going to do it. At the opening order is going to be in this and then we're going to reverse it for the closing statements as well so uh just draw into your trusty bucket and tell us who uh, is going to speak first sorry i can't open it it's the liberal democrat ross pepper so ross pepper will be first to speak with his opening statement and what about second Peter Eskreet from the Reform Party. Peter Eskreet will be second. And the third candidate to give us our opening statement, Sharon. Mark Jones for the Conservatives. Mark Jones for the Conservatives. Fourth. Rosie Kirk for Labour. Which hopefully will mean our, our last uh, candidate. It does. David Williams. David Williams, Lincoln Independence. Phew, that worked. <laughs> we've got enough. We've got the right numbers of people in the bucket. Sharon Edwards, our BBC Radio political uh, reporter there, just giving a bit of an overview of what the Police and Crime Commissioner does. You're with a special BBC Radio Lincolnshire Lincolnite debate as we introduce you to the five candidates who want that job, who want to be your Police and Crime Commissioner for Lincolnshire. So as you saw, Sharon did the, uh, the actual draw there. Uh, let's hear the opening statements first as you heard there Sharon drew out Ross Pepper from the Liberal Democrats. Good evening everyone. More and more people are feeling unsafe in their homes and on the streets. Around a third of crime in Lincoln goes unsolved. The police are overstretched and there is very little community vis visibility. The Tories continue to try and sound tough on crime with crime rates still as they are. And they are failing to prevent any crime happening. There's also the continued cuts to the services. What myself and the Liberal Democrats believe is we need to have a community led approach to policing. We need to see bobbies on the beat. We need services to help prevent crime. And we need funding, especially in Lincolnshire. And this needs to come from central government. For far too long, we have been neglected. If you vote for Liberal Democrats next week, this is the community-led approach that I want to introduce to Lincolnshire. It's a community for all of us, a police service for Lincolnshire. Thank you. That's uh, Ross Pepper starting the opening statements for the Liberal Democrats. Uh, the next person to give you his opening statement is Peter Eskreet from the Reform Party. Peter. Hello. It's been eight years since the role of Police Crime Commissioner was created, and it's still not clearly understood by the general public. Unfortunately, the role has been politicised, and I can tell you that I believe that this should not be a political role, and it is not an operational role. After all, this is why we have a Police Chief Constable. I do not think we should be wasting any more taxpayers' money on the office of the Police Crime Commissioner and instead should be spending money on real policing. What's best for Lincolnshire is my primary objective. If elected, I will ensure that there is full visibility and transparency of policing in Lincolnshire, starting with the office of the Police Crime Commissioner. I will use my years of experience in the private sector for the benefit of Lincolnshire and drive a new way of working, improving the systems and services. We have good police officers in Lincolnshire and historically it's the toughest force to get into and I want to make sure that the people of Lincolnshire get the best benefit from these policemen and women. That's Peter Eskreet from the Reform Party with his opening statement. Let's now go to Mark Jones who's standing for the Conservatives. So I've been the Police and Crime Commissioner since 2016, and it's been quite the journey. The police force that I inherited back in 2016 was on its knees financially. It hadn't been able to invest in the future, both with training, equipment, technology, and we've turned that ship around. And it's taken time. It's hard miles that have been very hard fought and won. 
We now get £11 million a year more from central government. That's a 16.5% increase. Compare that against other public sector bodies. We've done very well in very difficult times. That figure will rise to £16 million next year. That puts us in a very strong position to be able to deliver record recruitment of officers last year, same this year, and we're reaching now for the highest number of police officers Lincolnshire Police has ever known. The investments in technology and equipment back this up to put more police on the street and really take the fight to criminals. The next term for Police and Crime Commissioner is only three years long. We haven't got time to be training new people to get good at this job. Okay, I've already built those, time those there, skills Mark, and can deliver. 60 seconds. Uh, Mark Jones for the Conservatives. So let's now go to Rosie Kirk for Labour. I am proud to be Lincolnshire and I am standing to be your PCC to protect our county. I got into politics campaigning on road safety, fought for your libraries in the High Court and campaigned to get your tips reopened. I am a Lincolnshire citizen who detests that our county is receiving the lowest funding for our police. I promised to cut my wage by 25,000, putting the money into policing, scrap the unelected deputy, putting that money where it matters most and keep your taxes low. I will make Westminster pay. If you've ever been a victim of crime, I'm on your side. If you're from a coastal community that feels forgotten about, I'm on your side. If you're from rural, rural communities where you don't feel like you get justice, I'm on your side. If you're from our towns, our city, where antisocial behaviour is becoming increasingly common, I'm on your side. We get a rotten deal from Westminster. With your mandate, we can change this. Let's send them a message on May the 6th. Thank you. So that's Rosie Kirk for Labour. Now let's hear from David Williams from the Lincolnshire Independence. This evening you'll hear pledges of new funding, new programmes and promises of deliverable and affordable plans. So how are you going to choose between us when we all promise so much? You might vote for the candidate who's identified a particular issue as a priority, or you might vote on party political grounds. Or you could vote for who you think is best suited for the role. Now, Mark might have an advantage there. He's been doing the job, as he said, since 2016. And you will know if he's done well because you will feel safer and he will have achieved everything he set out to do and more. Or you could vote for a project administrator, a city councillor, an IT consultant, or even someone with over 40 years of leadership and operational experience who for the past three years has been committed to improving aspects of policing and criminal justice in Lincolnshire and who's transformed the Lincolnshire Police Independent Advisory Group. I hope in the next hour or so it'll be useful in helping you to decide. That's David Williams for the Lincolnshire Independent. So you've heard from all five of the candidates uh, with their opening statements. They'll get a chance uh, to do some closing statements when we wrap up at the end of the debate. Here being hosted by us at BBC Radio Lincolnshire and our friends at the Lincolnite. Feel free to tap away and comment as we go through and add any questions. Uh, but here at BBC Radio Lincolnshire, we love getting out and about in the community. We do this every day. We try and speak to you. Tell, you tell us what you think uh, is an issue and, and what needs sorting. So while we've been out and about recently, uh, we've been asking folk about what they would want to ask the police and crime commissioner candidates if they got the chance to speak to them directly. So uh, let's first of all look at two questions uh, that we had when we were out and about. And this is very pertinent to Lincolnshire on the issue of rural crime. Uh, Michael Jordan, JRH Water Management. Uh, we're agricultural rainwater harvesting experts. Uh, my question is is based on uh, van thefts on tools. Uh, myself and uh, other tradesmen that we know have had uh, a lot of tool thefts. Um, and the question is is what uh, if there's going to be any harsher sentences or what can be done to reduce the tool thefts? Um, because obviously it's our livelihood that uh, goes every time they're stolen. My name's Ben. My name's Ben Ray, uh, from just south of Lincoln at Boothby Graffo, and I'd be really interested to know how you can help tackle rural crime, whether that be hair coursing or um, 
theft of GPS off tractors or antisocial behaviour like motorbikes riding through farms and making a mess. Yeah, any uh, answers would be greatly appreciated. So that is uh, something that comes up time and time again when we're talking about various issues uh, on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Uh, the issue of rural crime, something that causes not only a lot of money damage uh, and is a really hits people in the bank, but emotionally we hear it's a big problem. All the candidates are here. We'll, we'll try and uh, make it a debate as best uh, we can. Uh, but let, let's start with, with you, Peter Estreet, from the Reform Party. The issue of rural crime there, what can we do? Yeah, I mean, I've been in similar situations, both Ben and Michael. At the beginning of lockdown, my defender was stolen, turned upside down a field down the road and stripped of bare parts. So I, I understand exactly what they're, they're coming from. You know, this is an operational decision at the end of the day, and I'm not going to pretend to uh, be the chief constable here and give you answers on how it should be tackled. What uh, I'm going to say is I'm obviously passionate about it. I've been in their situation and I'll do everything I can to ensure that uh, the police uh, and the chief constable are held accountable for the actions that they do in tackling these sort of rural crimes. Mark Jones for the Conservatives. Well, it's, it's very difficult to answer these very complex questions in the time we have, but fundamentally there are things the PCC can do. Firstly, you can appoint a chief constable who is a, a, a real crime-fighting police officer who wants to take the fight to criminals. And I've done that earlier this year. I've appointed an exceptional chief constable who will do that. Commitments are in place to put a new rural crime team in place, which will only be possible because of the record recruitment. There will be a roads crime policing team, again, to stop criminals accessing rural communities. And what I can do is speak to police minister, the Home Secretary, which I've done in the last week, to highlight to them the concerns of rural communities and make sure that sentencing fits the crime. We're getting new legislation through uh, Parliament at the moment and we absolutely need to make sure that's robust to help support our communities. And I'll put in place additional funding to make sure that new technologies can be used to invest in things that will protect our communities from crime as well as help the police support them in detecting. Rosie, can you hear us? Yes, thank you. Sorry, I didn't get you. Yeah, um, I don't know um, if everybody knows this, but Lincolnshire's got one of the worst rural crimes in the country. Year in, year out, it's increased. The crime, uh, rural crime has increased. So um, it's very upsetting for uh, people in the rural areas and it needs to be tackled. First of all, you know, it's a lot of it's down to funding. So we really need to look at the funding formula again and that we need to actually think about working with the N Farm National Farmers Union um, and use their approved metric in the police funding. We also need to invest in new technologies. Um, the equipment needs to have tracking devices on and um, there needs to be more security as well. Um, I spoke to the National Farmers Union yesterday about um, my vision, my plans, and also, I'd like to hold an international police technology agricultural conference, um, which would listen, um, which actually bring people together, the university businesses, to look at what we can do to help rural communities. Um, it's also really important to listen, um, and you, you know, have to hold the chief constable to account and get your say um, with policing. So. You know, we ha it's it's quite shocking that we've got some of the worst rural crime statistics in the country, and it's been the worst for eight years. So something has to change, and I feel like I'm that person that can do that for you know, in the rural areas. David Thank Williams you. for the Lincolnshire Independence on, on rural crime. This sort of question is nigh impossible to answer satisfactorily, frankly. Um, I could say I'd commit funds, resources to ensuring that rural crime will be one of my top priorities and that I have a plan in place to, uh, to reduce it and, uh, and, and eliminate it if possible. But if I said that, I'd be misleading you. I mean, priorities change apart from anything else and what's a priority today may, may be different tomorrow. And fundamentally, and uh, others have touched on this already, don't be duped into believing that the PCC is the person who's going to fix those problems with a pledge or a fund. They won't. It'll be the Chief Constable that will fix those things. The PCC is there to provide the framework within which the Police Constable operates. And from that, he provides the resources, the budget and equipment 
um, that the, the, the chief constable meets. The PCC will decide what happens in general terms of priorities, and the chief constable will be the person who decides how. So what will I do? I, I will ensure that both Michael and Ben and people like them are listened to and that they know they're being heard. I'll ensure that they know what's being done to sort their problem and if there are issues in dealing with it, that the police work with Ben and Michael and their communities to find a solution. Now, if that means finding extra funds or resources and if that's possible, then that will be done. And if that can be done, I'll hold the Chief Constable to account to do everything in his power to address the problem. But I can't make any promises. What I won't do, and this is key to everything that I will be about as the PCC, is I will not ignore people like them and Michael. They will be heard, they will be listened to, and there will be a, a continuous dialogue and engagement with them and their communities. Ross Pepper from the Liberal Democrats, the issue of rural crime. Well, I have to agree with uh, a lot that's been said. It is a dialogue with the rural communities, but I think one of the important things is the connection with the communities. We've lost that policing connection with the communities within Lincolnshire. It feels very remote. It feels like there is a disconnection between the police force and our communities in rural areas. I've known businesses who have had the similar um, thing happen to them, and they just feel like there isn't that local connection to the police force that is there to support them. I think that's one of the things. I think what we need to do is get the local uh, rural communities together and listen to what they have to say about this issue. It is a big issue in a rural county like Lincolnshire, but I think a lot of it comes down to community. But also, I, I will say this, and I'll probably say this a lot tonight, it is about preventing crime. A lot of you need to find out why these crimes are committed. Why are the tools being stolen? A lot of it comes down to the people who are committing the crimes. What are the causes for them to commit the crimes in the first place? If we can prevent crime, we can reduce the crime bill. That is a lot of what can be done with the police and crime commissioner and policing as a whole. Mark Jones for the Conservatives. Uh, Rosie Kirk said that. Uh, you know, crime in Lincolnshire is, is rural crime is one of the worst in the country. Is that acceptable? Well, it's never acceptable that we have victims of crime at all. It's it's obviously going to be easier for people to commit crimes in rural counties than it will be in sort of um, you know smaller counties where it's easier to get around. Lincolnshire's two and a half thousand square miles, five and a half thousand miles of road. It, it's a real challenge. But that does not mean that we should accept it. You know, we've got uh, a plan. We speak regularly to the rural community, the National Farmers Union and, and other partners. There, there are new technologies we can put in place through partnership working. And all of those plans are in place or can be in place into the future. The, there's an emerging uh, set of themes around uh, rural crime and then they shift in a different direction. You need to be able to flex and change and adapt and those are the things that we do by listening to our rural community and making sure partnerships work and that is something that we've done consistently. For, for, for Labour, we are a huge geographical county. I mean, how on earth do we tackle, you know, very remote areas which are going to be targeted for crime? Um, uh well, I think that, you know, it all fundamentally comes down that we're, not, we're the lowest paid police force in the country. I mean, that's just not on. It's just not right. And that's obviously going to have an impact on our rural communities. I mean, making comparisons of well, some of the smaller sort of areas, it's just not good enough. Um, you know, uh, the farmers, the rural communities are suffering in our county and we should do everything we can to put... The, the people of our county first. I mean, that's what I'm all about. That's what my campaign's about, putting the people of Lincolnshire first. And we should be fighting, you know, for fairness. And we should be making sure that we haven't got the highest crime rates for rural crime in the country. I mean, it's pretty disgraceful, really. This shouldn't be happening. Um, so that would be, you know, I mean, we need to do something about that, don't we, really? I and mean, it's going up. It's been the worst for eight years. So, and oh, I believe great. livestock has been um, particularly... Uh, Peter, that's great if I can bring you in on, on this. I mean, a lot of the, the, the candidates are saying, you know, I can't promise to do stuff because I'm not the chief constable. But uh, isn't there a role for the police and crime fish to hold the chief constable account and saying this is a priority for the public, they need to do more? 
Yes, and, and you know, it's a newly uh, positioned chief constable, and I should think, bear in mind the size of Lincolnshire, he should know that rural crime is important. Um, I'm not sure what to add to that. You know, this is a, an operational decision, and I can highlight it, but I think everybody who lives in Lincolnshire knows we are a massive rural area, and so rural crime is obviously going to be an issue. Yeah, I think we've just got a comment about uh, this while we've been talking that we can just <laughs> yes. see on the, the, the screen. Resources yeah, is getting lost. From Rod, police officers don't like going to the countryside uh, in fear of getting lost. <laughs> is, it, is it really that bad, Ross Pepper, for the Liberal Democrats? Well, I think this comes back to having that local community connection. You, you, if you have a local Bobby, you don't get lost. If you know, have someone who knows the area, there isn't that issue. The thing is, we are covering a huge area. But if you're sending officers miles, they don't necessarily know the area that they're going to. Um, so it's bound to be an issue. You need someone who is local. You, you need that local connection to know the people, to know the issues, to kind of have that feedback because people talk to each other. People talk to the police officers. You, if you take the police officer out of the community, you lose that network of information. Uh, David Williams from Lincolnshire Independence as, as, as well. Um, it, it's, it's, it's no doubt when we go out and speak to people, this comes up time and time again, rural crime. And I get that, you know, the PCC can only do so much, but the public do look to the PCCs to do something, don't they? No, the PCC cannot only do so much. The PCC can and should do everything within his power. Uh, the, the point about this sort of discussion is that when we get drawn into, into debates about funding and lack of police resources and so on, that's fine. Uh, that is an issue, that, that Lincolnshire Police is the lowest funding per head of population in relation to the police budget and the officer numbers are well down and more officers are needed and would be welcome. But that's not the solution. The solution is the framework within which the police constable delivers policing across the county. Now, that will mean in part having more officers. It will mean deploying them effectively. I would add at this stage that recruiting another 240 new officers in the next 18 months, they are going to be an experience. It means investing a huge amount in training for those officers because they will have a big challenge ahead of them to come up to speed. But it also means, and, and here I agree with what Ross has said a couple of times now, it means having a really effective engagement strategy with communities because community policing and community safety is not the domain of the police on their own. They should be working hand in glove with communities. And on another side, getting back to the business about resources, you look at what might be termed force multipliers or force enablers. And that includes, yes, use of drones and that sort of thing, but it also means using things like innovation, technology, adaptability, collaboration across borders. It's hugely complex, but the opportunities that, that are there are massive. And the PCC's role in corralling all of those opportunities, formulating them into a plan that the Chief Constable will to deliver, that is the role of the Police and Crime Commissioner. That's David what... Williams, we'll leave it there, because we've got another question coming in uh, from one uh, person here. This is uh, Kieran. You can't promise to cut your wage. Instead of promising stuff like that, uh, why not voluntarily fund different organisations to help uh, subsidise things such as homelessness, the substance abuse that is in the city, uh, in, in Lincoln, or even voluntary help, fund mental health services? So um, I, I think there is a suggestion there that you, you should cut your wage and put some of that money into other areas. Um, Ross Pepper, would you be prepared to give up your wage? Um, I've already committed to cutting my salary and putting that into crime prevention strategies, whether that be drug rehabilitation services, uh, youth services, anything like that, that will help the community of Lincolnshire and to help prevent crime. Putting it into the police force, with all due respect, a small amount like that is going to be swallowed up in no time. If you invest it in cutting the causes of crime, just like the, the Chief Constable of Merseyside Police said um, in the last week in The Guardian, if he had £5 million to spend, he would spend £4 million on tackling poverty and £1 million on um, tackling crime. That's the kind of thing that we actually need to do to drive down crime in general. We need to tackle the root causes of crime to make sure that policing is kind of 
just kind of the crimes that happen. We need to kind of drive down the crime numbers, not tackle crime when it happens. That's and how much the, of your salary are you willing to give up, Ross? £25,000. £25,000, yeah. And uh, obviously you're in the position, you've had the job, um, Mark Jones, with the Conservatives. Why not give your, some of your salary up or, or not have a deputy, for example, as has been Well, let, let, let's be really clear. There's no legal mechanism to cut your salary. You can choose, as any individual can, to give away some of their net salary. That's everybody's choice. And what I give to charity is between me and those charities. But what's really clear is that we don't want to race to the bottom. If this role, which is already the lowest paid PCC in the country, Lincolnshire, and I have no issue with that whatsoever, if our debate descends around how much of our salary we're prepared to donate to a charity, I think we're missing the point of what the PCC is there to do. Bringing in an additional £14 million in extra funding into the county um, that enables us to prevent crime and tackle crime. My deputy um, gets paid £18,000 a year. He doesn't claim any fuel. It probably costs him to come to work, truth be known. And he has gone around the county um, and the region and nationally bringing that mantle around fraud and scams. Thousands of people excuse me, trained to prevent fraud and scams. People's life savings have been saved as a result. He delivers exceptional value for money for Lincolnshire. And I think this debate needs to be about things that are a bit higher than how much of our salary we're prepared to give to charity. Peter Eskrit from the Reform Party. It's, it's missing the point, says Mark Jones. It, it, it's a headline grabber more than anything I think he's suggesting. Yeah, I don't really see the benefit of cutting uh, wages, you know, for the position. You know, we, we've agreed, the taxpayers agreed to pay the salary for the police crime commissioner and uh, that's salary the position. Um, I mean, I'm taking a pay cut if I do get the position, but I'm taking that cut because uh, I'm moving from the private sector to the public sector. And, uh, and these are the decisions we make when we want to prioritise Lincolnshire above uh, ourselves. Um I'm not sure what else to add to that. I think we're probably better off looking at the way we are spending money in the police force and looking at how we can spend that better. Um, for example, I don't understand why we're spending money on diversity squads to look at diversity in the police force when I don't think anybody cares what ethnic minority their police officer is or what their sexuality is or what gender they are. I think people just want to know that when they call 999, a police officer is going to turn up. So ultimately, you could look at the existing spending and say, actually, there's probably better ways of spending it rather than taking a pay cut. David Williams, Lincolnshire Independence. Uh, it's looking at the, the budget, not what, what you earn as police and crime commissioner. I have been accused of offering inducements in one of my blogs recently. Um, I don't think it's very helpful. I do agree with Mark to an extent here to make what I, what I do consider as a gesture. I think it's a very wholesome gesture of giving up some of your salary. However, I've identified long before these sorts of issues were raised. A very good example in Gloucestershire, where the Police and Crime Commissioner there has set up a Commissioner's Fund. Now, that Commissioner's Fund he uses as um, a pot of money, it's 1% of his budget, from which uh, the community can bid for ventures that are crime reduction related. Now, that can be any, any, any manner of things that I believe, I'm not sure here, that he may contribute an element of his own salary there by way of setting an example. Now, frankly, I think that is a good thing to do. I think leading by example is a good thing to do. But if you are going to make those sorts of gestures or commitments, they need to have purpose, they need to have value, and they need to have some positive outcome. So the short answer to the question you didn't quite answer, ask me, but I will answer anyways, would I be prepared to give up some of my salary? Yes, I probably would if it were in a scheme, in a supporting <clears throat> scheme along those lines that I've just described. And Rosie Kirk for, for Labour, um, a few arguments there that it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gesture and nothing else. And we don't know, individuals might be giving to charity already without making it, it public. Don't we need to pay a good wage for the police and crime commissioner to, to attract good people as candidates? I think... You know, in, 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 the, in the current climate, when so many people are suffering at the moment, and Lincolnshire itself has suffered through COVID and the circumstances, along with that, people are losing their jobs. 
um, people on very sadly low pay. And yes, that does have to increase. You look at the politicians and you see what's going on at the moment with the, the government and all the things that are going on with, you know, cost of the flat, um, all the sort of sleaze that's going on at the moment. And people lose faith in their politicians. Now, I want to give that faith back and that hope that I'm not that sort of politician that is sort of thinking about myself. I want to give that money back into the system. Yes, Mark says there's no mechanisms to do this, but actually, you know, I'm prepared to write to the Home Secretary um, to say that, you know, that I want this to be happening in Lincolnshire, that I want to give my salary, part of my salary, 25,000 back into the system. I think that we should put the police first, the funding and the people first. And I have, it, it is not unprecedented to do this. Andy Burnham's done, you know, in, in, in Manchester, um, you know, other MPs have actually done similar. Um, so it's something that, you know, it shows that I'm in solidarity with the people and that I'm prepared to do that. And that makes it important. Let's just go to the next comment that's coming while we've been talking. Uh, Simon says the salary should be zero pounds. Taxpayers pay us not to prove this position, unlike. Uh, what uh, one of the, the candidates suggests it's highly unpopular if there's an option on the ballot to remove the position altogether it would win by a landslide and they know it it's simply a Tory vanity project now, Peter Eskri, I think you argued in your opening statement uh, for, for the Reform Party you are, that we shouldn't even have this role at all, which is uh, odd that you're standing for if you don't think it should be there just explain your, your thinking on that yeah, I mean, it could be zero, but ultimately the position is there and I'd rather stand for the position and get it and dwindle down that department and put that money into real policing rather than let someone else take that position and uh, build a mini empire. Uh, ultimately, I don't think this role should be political and uh, and I think everybody knows what I mean when I say that. Uh, I think I can make decisions that uh, need to be made in this role to uh, reduce that commissioner's office and uh, use that money better elsewhere. So, so although you don't agree with it, you you would stand to sort of take it apart, uh, bizarrely. You'd sort of take your own job apart. Yes, I think I would uh, I would not rule that out as an option. And uh, I would probably look at doing that as uh, almost a priority if it turns out that that's the best thing to do for Lincolnshire. Uh, Ross Pepper, the role shouldn't even be there. No one should be even standing for it for Liberal Democrats. Uh, well, I would agree. I, I don't believe this role should exist. I think it is a vanity project. I would like to see the return of the police uh, authorities, but see them strengthened, see them actually accountable. Um, th this, this position does cost a lot of money to run. Um, and one of the things that I would do is try to scrap it. Um, but we are where we are. I mean, it didn't stop the Brexit. Uh, the well, UKIP, the Brexit Party, whatever you wanted to call them, going into Europe and taking the money when they were there. Um, and we need to try and dismantle this role. We need to actually make sure that the local authority um, structure that was in place is strengthened and is still accountable. It's, Kirk, no, you, you saw the, the elections, the, the voting is so low for this election. I don't know Kirk, if anyone for, can say it's... For Labour, I, I can't remember what the turnout last time was, but, but as Rob says, it is very low for, for, for this election. It has been consistently. This role shouldn't exist, the role you're standing for. That's been one of the arguments put forward. I think that you know that we are we, we we are all standing for this role for police and crime commissioner, and you know that there's always been a bit of controversy about um, when it was first introduced and whether it was worthwhile. But I I just actually think that it's really important that we actually have a voice for the people. Um, we're elected representatives, and we need to build that communication and that conduit between the people and the police and hold the police to account. And that's what I intend to do. I intend, intend to go out, hold surgeries in police stations, speak to the community. And then, you know, you find out the issues and what really matters to people. And as we know, uh, Lincolnshire is a vast county with lots of different issues and some that go, th you know, go through the same um, with some of the issues that are there. So it, it, it's like any, you know, we, we're standing for this. I mean, I'm curious that I, did, I thought the Reform Party was a party. Wasn't that political? I, I, I'm a bit confused um, by that. Um, so you're saying you're not political, but you you stand for a political party. Um, you can't really say those sort of things, really. No, I'll bring Peter in a minute, but Mark Jones is nodding his head there as well. I'll, I'll let you come back in a minute on that, Peter. Uh, Mark Jones, this role shouldn't exist. 
Yeah, I mean, the reality is the when this role was created, getting rid of the um, policing authority saved the taxpayers of Lincolnshire £170,000 a year. It's utter nonsense to say that the creation of the PCC role in Lincolnshire cost the taxpayers more money. It's simply not true. And the thing is, as soon as you create something that's more visible and accountable, people quite rightly look at it and say, what does that do for me? Robert Peel introduced the first iteration of a PCC alongside the first modern English police force. And there's been a version that makes sure we don't live in a police state and that public money is spent properly ever since. This isn't a new thing. It's just the latest version of it. And, but, you know, I would, I would hope that all the candidates took up the opportunity to meet with the chief executive of the Office of Police and Crime Commissioner to understand what the role was, what those hardworking staff that actually cost 0.8% of our budget and deliver so much for Lincolnshire before they're talking about dismantling them. Why do, so few the, why do you so few of the public vote in this election then, Mark, if you, you think it's so important for Look, them to engage? There have been surveys done where eight out of ten people don't know the name of their MP. MPs have been around a very long time. The role of Police and Crime Commissioner is exceedingly new. It takes time for people to understand and our job is to make sure they understand it. Not come up with gimmicks about cutting salaries. It's no wonder David Williams for the, the role if that's Lincolnshire Independent. Uh, Ross says nobody votes for, for this. No one's interested. It's a pointless role. Oh, thank you. At last, as you can see, I've been tearing my hair out here. <laughs> there is a failure of police and crime commissioners as a concept and, uh, and as entities as well. And that is in the 10 years or so that they've been in existence, they have not proved their value. Now, that's not to say that police and crime commissioners don't have value. And I think it is spurious to suggest that they need to be dismantled without a very clear idea what, of what you would put in their place and why that would be better. The key issue at the moment is, OK, people lack confidence, faith in their police and crime commissioners, and that needs to be addressed. Who needs to be address it, addressing it? The police and crime commissioners themselves. And I have to say, I share some of the um, reticence that people have about whether it should exist or not. There needs to be an entity. There needs to be an entity that sits between the public and the police, that represents public's view, holds the police to account so that they do what they need to be doing in serving the public interest and so on. Is police, are police and crime commissioners the answer? Good ones, yes. Uh, mediocre ones, no. So I just want to let that remains to be that remains to be seen. The challenge for whoever is successful in this is to prove that they are delivering value and to prove the value of the police and crime commissioner role. Just on the on the role being political, and I just wanted to give uh, Peter Escreet from the Reform Party a chance to come back on what Rosie Kirk was saying. It was sort of suggest suggesting, well, you're standing for a political party. It is political. Yeah, I mean, I'm not political and I'm not standing for the party. I'm a representative of the party. But ultimately, and I've said previously, that uh, I'm only interested in what's best for Lincolnshire. I don't care about party policy or politics. I think it's important that the general public know where I'm coming from. And uh, a lot of my views do align to the uh, Reform Party. Wouldn't but ultimately, it be better to stand as an independent then? Yes, I could stand in, as an independent, but uh, ultimately, and I think it's important, as I was just saying, that uh, people understand where I'm coming from, from politically. Uh, lots of the me members of the public have contacted me and asked questions that really aren't anything to do with the role, but they're interested in them and they're passionate about them. And, and I've answered them from my point of view, not from the point of the party. Um, if successful in this role, I'll do the best I can do. Uh, and then I'll go back to do my private sector role. Uh, I'm not interested in a political career. I'm not doing this as a, a launch pad for a career. I'm doing this because, you know, I, I'm, I really want to do what's right for Lincolnshire. And this position in Lincolnshire has actually got the ability to drive changes here. Peter Street there from the Reform Party. I just want to uh, come to one of the comments about taking pay cuts and not doing it. We've, we've got one that flashed up on screen uh, briefly a, a moment ago. I think that somebody was suggesting that basically... Uh, they wouldn't take a, there it is, David Ball, I wouldn't take a pay cut for what I do, neither should you get paid to do a job. Now move on to the next question, says David Ball, that's what David says. You with a BBC Radio Lincolnshire Lincolnite joint debate where you're being introduced to the candidates who want your vote a week today 
as the next police and crime commissioner for Lincolnshire. Let's get back out and about uh, and uh, see somebody else who is big. To give you the background to this one, uh, this is a guy called Don Woods, who's from Gainsborough, who runs a business there. Uh, he says he's fed up time and time again of having criminal damage to his vans. And over the years, uh, this has happened a number of times, and it's uh, never ended up with uh, anybody being convicted, and he's fed up. This is what he said on the back of... Uh, that background with a couple of questions. The two questions I've got is one, as we stand now, are police fit for purpose anymore? Is the Lincolnshire police, is Gainsborough police fit for purpose? Because if your budgets aren't meeting it now, they're not gonna be in five, 10 years time and the criminals are just gonna upscale what they're doing. So my second question is why are we working day shifts when the criminals are working night shifts? What, why, when my van had its brick put through recently, why was the PSA, as he told me, was not aware that there was a gang of lads out in the evening between two and four o'clock smashing and kicking cars in? Where were the police at this time? This adds to, are they viable? Is our police force viable? So is the police force in Lincolnshire fit for purpose? Is it viable? Uh, David Williams for the Lincolnshire Independence. Of course it's viable, but it needs to be more effective as any police force does. I think, I mean, it comes back to the, the, the comments I made um, earlier when, uh, when Mike and Ben were, were asking about rural crime. The point about Don's predicament there is he feels that he is not being heard. He feels that his problems with his van being broken into aren't being addressed and that for some reason the Lincolnshire police just aren't responding to what in his view is an obvious issue. It's happening at night and I'm only seeing police during the day. Now the key thing here is, and I come right back to what Ross was saying earlier, it's about ensuring that you understand those circumstances. Now very likely the police in Gainsborough do have a sense of when crime is happening but clearly in Don's case his confidence that they have a sense of what's going on and that they are doing what they can to address it is very low. That's the thing that needs to be addressed. I don't know the circumstances that Don is, uh, is suffering from there specifically, but clearly more needs to be done to engage with him and probably other business owners like him and say, okay, this is the problem that you're telling us about. This is what we can do about it. Is there a gap between those two things in terms of ability to deliver an expectation and how would we address it? Uh, it's easy to say we need to sit down and talk and I know what Don and others need is action, but you can only get action and you can only reassure people like Don if you have those discussions and then something is done as a result of those discussions and it's not just left out there thinking the police don't care and they're not fit for purpose. Rosie Kirk for Labour, is Lincolnshire Police fit for purpose? Is it viable? Oh, it, it, you know, it's if you know that the Lincolnshire Police have got the lowest morale in the country, it's very disappointing that when you hear these um, statistics, um, I mean, it always goes back to the issue of funding. You know, Lincolnshire is the lowest funded force, has the lowest morale, um, conviction rates are only 8%. It's gotten worse over the last 10 years because of um, austerity and the cuts. Because if you think about it, it's not just the police that have had all these cuts um, and they feel very low. It's actually um, the, all the other services that have been impacted. So criminals, if you look, if you look at public, sec public health has been cut. Um, these are prevention services. Um, help support in, in, with drug support and things like that. Um, you've also got cuts in a lot of the public sector. So these all have like an impact on the police. So the police are dealing with a lot of issues that they might not have been dealing with 10, 15 years ago that they're having to deal with. So you've got quite a combination of, with the lowest funded force, we've got low morale, and also you've had cuts for the t last 10 years, unfortunately, with austerity and all the attacks on Mark the Mark Jones for the Conservatives. Uh, this has come up, whoever's been in charge of the police, whatever government has been, Lincolnshire gets a raw deal for funding and it never seems to change. Is Lincolnshire being left, let down? Is it the forgotten county? 
Well, I have to be clear, we're now getting £11 million a year more from central government than we were when I started. And that's going to rise to around £16 million next year. That is the best picture we've ever had. We were getting £116 million a year to spend on policing in 2016. We were on the brink. We now get around £140 million to invest in policing in Lincolnshire. We've got better kit, better technology. We've got record numbers of recruited officers. Now, that is not the finished article. There's a lot more to do. We have seen a 17% reduction in the last 12 months on vehicle crime, but it's not enough. If you happen to own a vehicle that's had that happen to it, then that is not acceptable. We, we've got investments, quarter of a million pounds in Gainsborough, um, in the latest CCTV technology to better work with local government and policing. So there's lots going on that's constant improvement. Yes, I'd like to see Lincolnshire Police get additional funding. We want to see the funding formula changed. I challenged the policing minister in the last seven days on that, and he's on video of saying that that's what he wants to do within this parliament. Now, we know the funding formula change is complicated and difficult and everything else. And the last time it was changed was when Tony Blair was in power and that took the money from rural areas. But, but it's been going on for need... years, hasn't it? We've been having uh, it has. you know, chief constable after chief constable. We've there. had promises that money's going to come and it does, and does it ever coming. happen? It, Peter Estrick from the Reform Party. Is not, Peter, not no money. Mark Jones says £11 million. The money is there. It's coming into Lincolnshire. Well, eleven million over four years, quick math, two and a half pence cent a year. That that sounds like inflation to me. Um that's keeping us on a, a level playing field. It doesn't sound like increased funding to me. Um and I don't think the general public will see his increased funding either, given the budget of 116 million in 2016. Well, it's delivering more um, police officers, so it is extra. <laughs> Uh, Ross Pepper, just to bring you in on uh, this uh, uh, as as well, that money's going to make a difference, isn't it, or not? Well, it will touch the surface, but the, obviously we have a Conservative Police and Crime Commissioner with a Conservative government, and we're kind of holding level. We, If we can try and get higher, brilliant, fantastic, and I will be pushing to make sure that Lincolnshire gets its fair share, because we still always seem to be left behind. And, and that's on, one on, of the things... On that point, we've got a question as you were talking there, uh, uh, Ross, from David Mitchell saying, all government are conservative, so why do the government ignore pleas for funding? I mean, that is a an interesting point, isn't it, uh, Mark Jones? You know, yes, it should be easier to get extra funding if we've got so many Lincolnshire conservatives, shouldn't it? Well, it shouldn't be easier because if they favoured an area just because they happen to have Conservative MPs, we'd all quite rightly be saying that that, that wasn't a fair system nationally. Oh, we do yeah. David yeah. Williams, do you want to come in on this, on Lincolnshire Independence? Well, yes, uh, there is favouring, I think, yes. politically, not necessarily in relation to policing, but certainly in, in relation to communities funding um, for levelling up of, of areas. I think there's a really important point here. A number of people have said level playing field. It absolutely isn't a level playing field for Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire, in spite of the increases, which have been very welcome, Mark, sits still at the bottom of the per head funding table nationally. Yeah. That has not changed, regardless of all of the bids and grants and, and things that we've got. The, the, the thing about the PCCs and their value, if you like, now I don't know how many conservative PCCs there are across the country, but I sense that PCCs as a body are not making enough noise to address the iniquity of funding across forces. Crime is not confined to geographical locations. It crosses county boundaries. Which well, is Pepper, everyone bring you in on this from the Liberal Democrats as well. I mean, is there an argument that Lincolnshire shouldn't get as much funding as, say, somewhere like Manchester, where their crime would be much higher? Well, to be fair, it's not necessarily that. It's the, the area we have to cover. We are a large rural county. It's not just the, the population, it's the area that we have to cover. It's, it's got to balance between the, the numbers of people and the um, and the area that we've got to travel with for police officers to, to cover to get to the to the crimes. But can I just touch on the, the question that John raised, um, which obviously is about the traffic... Um, the traffic um, situation that he mentioned um, in terms of the car break-in. 33% of all crimes in Lincolnshire are in between October 2019 and 2020 went unsolved. And I think that's quite a shameful um, stat 
that the, the Lincolnshire Police, unfortunately, is is not performing. And I think that's possibly down to the lack of funds, the lack of officers. Um, no, and I think that for the Conservatives, as the person who has had the role, uh, I mean, are some of these things that are, you know might seem low level to the police in the grand scheme of things when compared with murders or violent crime. Actually, to people on the street, they really matter these what you might call lower level things, and they are down the list of priorities. Is that fair? No, I don't think it's fair. I think it absolutely is clear that community-based crimes, as they would be collectively known, are a priority and they are a growing priority under the new chief constable. Um, you know, what, what's not recognised um, in this debate so far is that the National Inspectorate for Policing grades Lincolnshire as good. There is not an inherent problem with the efficiency and effectiveness of Lincolnshire Police. Of course, there's always more to do and there's plans in place to improve it. And the PC Street for the Reform Party, you're that. raising your eyebrows at what Mark Jones was saying there. Peter? I don't know the Peter is great. Can you hear us from the Reform Party? I think Peter's lost us a minute. We'll hopefully get back to him. Rosie yeah. Kirk, on this issue of funding, which has come up there, uh, time and time uh, again, I mean, it's fair to say whatever government's been in charge, whether it's been a Conservative, a Labour, or a coalition government, every Chief Constable, every police and crime official says we're not getting enough money. How would you go to the government and say, we need some more money, given that we, uh, you know, I mean, Mark argues that we are getting some more, but it's still lower than it should be. Well, first of all, I'd like to sort of go with the question that David Mitchell asked about, you know, it's a Conservative council, we've got all these Conservative MPs, and yet we're not, it's total complacency as far as I'm concerned. I think I've always been a campaigner and, uh, you know, I challenge the status quo, and I think that's, you know, what people would get in me is I've always got a good track record to campaign, to challenge, and to be going down to Westminster and actually, you know, challenging, you know, not having cosy photographs with Pretty Patel, but actually challenging them, you know, and then you find that, you know, it's all their mates. You, you see it all the time at the moment, you know, things that are coming out recently. And the thing is, you need somebody that's got a lot of integrity and passion and is a good campaigner, which is what I've always been, and always have a good track record. I just think we need change in Lincolnshire. We really do. I mean, that word is used, change, but it really does need change. It needs somebody to be fighting on the behalf of the Lincolnshire people, not complacent that, you know, they're always going to vote Conservative in a Conservative county. It's about time that we have change, and I feel that I've always been that sort of person that can create that change and go down and challenge the narrative. You, you do Peter, need that. Peter, I great with the Reform Party's back with the story. You lost us briefly there on the, on the sound, Peter. I think you were rolling your eyes when Mark was talking. Just explain why. Oh, I, I do apologise. Um, I think there's always efficiencies to be found. The amount of yeah. organisations I've gone into as a consultant where they've said, you know, it's all good, it's all good, we don't need you here, etc., etc. When you actually go in and actually review it and as it, with a fresh pair of eyes... Uh, there's always efficiencies to be made. So I do think that uh, the policing is not any different. I think that we've got good police officers. I think that uh, it's normally management and leadership that are at fault when it comes to uh, these sort of areas. Peter Street there from the Reform Party. Are you with BBC Radio Lincolnshire and a Lincolnite special debate uh, where you are being introduced to uh, your, your candidates, the people you can vote for next Thursday, a week today, for the Police and Crime Commissioner role. Let's get out and about. Now, here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire, we feature many, and this has been a huge thing, particularly in lockdown, of the litter picking groups that have uh, 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 cropped up. Uh, let's go to the Boston area where the Witherton Wombles are one of them. Steve Slater is one of the volunteers there, and this is what he had to tell us. Well, well, we need, we need to have a deterrent. There's got to be a deterrent. There's got to be more cameras to catch it. As, as we're doing things regular, we know where we're going back week after week to the same problem. A different fly tip, but a fly tip in the same area. So with the modern technology these days, we, we could put cameras in that area and catch these people red-handed. And then there wants to be a thorough deterrent, you know, even to the stage where, you know, we take the vehicle away and crush it, you know, uh, be that... You know, because there's got to be a massive deterrent to stop other people doing it. Why aren't we having more cameras? Why aren't we, you know, having the deterrent and, and people know what the deterrent clearly is? And why aren't we prosecuting people? Because nobody's getting prosecuted for it. 
Uh, let's come to Peter Street for the Reform Party first of all. The, this is a huge issue for people, fly tipping, rubbish being left, uh, and obviously the councils are involved as well as the police in this. Um, what's the answer? Stop fly tipping. I mean, this is this is not a, not a question for the Police Crime Commissioner. I mean, I think it shows the morals of, uh, of the people who are doing it. And uh, I don't think sorting out people's morality is the role of the police crime commissioner. To be perfectly honest, so you don't. If you were, you, it wouldn't be. If you were in the office of police and crime commissioner, it wouldn't be something you'd be saying to the to the police or the other authorities or campaigning for to, to to get sorted. No, of course we need to do better ways of tackling it. But uh, I think uh, that's more around detection and then the actions we do afterwards. I think crushing people's cars. Although I can see. Uh, Steve's uh, frustration in the matter, uh, being on the front line, picking up litter, I, I think that's a bit over the top. I think there's a middle ground between uh, that and letting people off. Uh, David Williams for the Lincolnshire Independence. This is a, another issue that comes up time and time again, littering, picking, and I know some of the responsibility is, is the council's responsibility, but do the police have a, 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 play, a, a role to play? You've been reading my Twitter feed, probably, but uh, yeah, look, Fly tipping is a shared responsibility amongst local authorities, environment agencies, and the police. And actually, what Steve said in that video was was quite right. You know, stuff needs to be done. Maybe CCTV cameras is the answer. There are counties that have very active, and I believe Cambridgeshire is a good example of this, effective rural networks to combat this sort of thing. My issue, and, and here I'll just sort of point to Mark, and Mark has raised the prospect of a £250,000 uh, fly tipping fund, fine. But is fly tipping a policing priority or is it a local authority and environment agency priority? Let's get Mark but, Jones to answer that, please, uh, the current, uh, in, currently in the role of the service. Well, firstly, I would say fly tipping is a crime. Therefore, as police and crime commissioner, it is definitely within the purview of the PCC to be concerned about. It concerns residents. It, seeing rubbish everywhere makes people more fearful of crime. It leads to further issues in the area. So it absolutely should be something we should be prepared to work in partnership with local government to do. Um, what we've got to do is differentiate. There's a difference between somebody dumping their own sofa, somebody charging people to then criminally dump, and indeed the large dumping we see at a national level, which is serious and organised crime. This can't be solved by local government alone. We need to work locally, regionally and nationally. And the fund will be created if I'm elected to help drive that strategy, drive joint working, keep our communities free of fly tipping and actually tackle those various different elements that lead to it. There isn't one simple answer to this, as most things are, are that way, but it absolutely it's a crime. Of course, we should be interested in it. And what are the local authorities doing, though, there? Why it is a policing priority? And what is it that you're not going to be delivering, Mark? Because you've invested £250,000 of police budget into fly tipping that might more appropriately be done through the local authorities, which, by the way, part of the issue with fly tipping stems from a decision by Lincolnshire County Council some six years ago, when I believe you were on the council, to close some of the council tips. Now, that, I'm sure, was a very legitimate decision. Mark Jones, on that, come back on that. There is a consequence. Yeah, I mean, we, what we're talking about is having a joined-up approach across Lincolnshire to tackle organised fly tipping. That is not directly to do with whether you can be bothered to go to your local tip. There's elements that, that are definitely that, but the vast majority is tackling people that are unlicensed, that are getting paid to pick up rubbish and then dump it. There are also no, serious and organised crime groups jump, dumping HGV loops. That is nothing to do with whether the tips are open for extended hours. Rosie Kirk be... for Labour, is this, a, is this a police matter or is it a council matter? Well, it's a local authority matter, and Mark knows this because he was the executive member of finance on the county council when the decisions were made to close Wisby and other tips around the county, which was a disaster. Um, I, I always campaign to get Wisby Recycling Centre reopened, um, fly tipping increased. I was actually on um, ITV Calendar about it a few years ago, and I've also campaigned on that issue. So Mark knows it's a local authority issue. 250000 could be spent... Um, in different areas within the police um, and all, you know, there's, there's a coastal areas and things like that. People are really left behind and 
Yes, littering is really a nuisance. Um, I can't stand littering myself. I can't stand fly tipping. It's a disgrace. And I'm sure everybody who's listening to this agrees with us. But that money should be spent in a better way. Um, I'm, afraid the a, I'm afraid it's total hypocrisy here. Mark knows it. It's hypocrisy. Ruff, knows it as, as simple as that uh, of, the, uh, of the tips closing, or is this a, a criminal matter that the police do need to look at? I think there is an element of the tips closing, but that's a household issue. I think the local authorities have a part to play in the, the dumping uh, that we see and bl that blights our county. We live in a beautiful county, one of the probably the most gorgeous counties we have in the UK. But I think what we also need to do is there is an element of criminal activity in here. There is those people who collect um, waste and recyclable material, unrecyclable material around the county and then dump it. I think there does need to be some element in the police budget for this, but whether it is one of the top priorities. But on the CCTV issue that was mentioned in the film, the problem is if you start putting CCTV up in one particular area, you then move it on to another area. It's it's never going to stop. It's always going to continue to move because we have the large rural county that we do. So I think, it, again, it comes back down to that community network of having people on the ground who know where these people are, especially the criminal element that is uh, dumping illegally and i think that's where how we need to tackle it is that community element of policing just, is just missing quickly mark jones just come back on i just want to give you a chance to come back at rosie Kirk says you're a hypocrite over this yeah i mean it's sim simply not the case i mean it's it's very politically expedient to sort of link um you know collective responsibility six years ago on a county council which has got literally a tiny element to do with this fly tipping problem. This is criminal acts by organised criminals that we need to work together in partnership to tackle. If we stop being good partners and investing in partnership working, where will it end? Lincolnshire County Council put £1.6 million over three years into fighting domestic abuse. Well, they could turn around and say, well, why isn't the police spending that out of their budget? You work in partnership. It's what we do. It keeps people safe. And it is the best of Lincolnshire that we do that. Why has BBC been Radio Lincolnshire for the last five years? Oh. Sorry, just well, we again. did. I held, I held a fly tipping summit. I brought partners together. We've changed a lot of the practices that happen in Lincolnshire. We've seen this grow as a national issue. And what I'm saying is the response needs to increase. We need to do more. Thank you uh, there. That's a lively debate about fly tipping. Uh, let's uh, go to uh, Bartley now, who's had a question on our Facebook page with this BBC Radio Lincolnshire joint Lincolnite BBC Radio Lincolnshire debate. Uh, you've got the five candidates who want to be your Lincolnshire Police and Crime Commissioner with you. Uh, Bartley says, wouldn't Lincolnshire Police have more time to assist the public if they weren't to deal with the new urban associated crime uh, you can sit at the stone borough and you can watch homeless people meeting exhausted uh, looking 14 year old vehicle theft might be down 17 percent but stabbing and violent offenses are now rife within the local media what are any of you as candidates going to do about this so this is an issue about violent crime which does frighten people which is uh, another matter that comes up time and time again uh, when you speak to people on the street rosie kirk for labor well, I think we know that violent crime is on the increase and we know the consequences, um, unfortunately, of the reduction in the police, reduction in services, especially in, in, in public health, uh, youth services. And, you know, and there needs to be uh, far more investment in these areas. So it all, I'm afraid it all goes back down to sort of the funding formula, getting more funding and getting more police on the streets. And um, also, you know, uh, what I'd like to say is um, the PCSOs have always played an important part as the ears of our community. And unfortunately, um, under Mark's leadership, they've actually decreased and they're now not actually um, going to be recruited. So, you know, it's all about sort of community policing, um, have a visible policing on our streets, uh, prevention. Um, and um, tackling these violent crimes um, when they are. I mean, it's it's a consequence of all that, but there needs to be investment put back in our public services. I mean, um, you know, it's... Peter Escrit from Reform Party, can a PCC really influence whether there is violent crime or, or not? And this issue with the, the, the homelessness and associated issues with that? 
Yeah, like I said previously, I do not believe the police crime commissioner role is, is an operational role. This is why we have a chief constable of police. Um, my role, if I'm elected as police crime commissioner, is to ensure that uh, these priorities are set. And uh, I would suggest that antisocial behaviour, especially what I've seen in the centre of Grantham, has massively increased uh, towards the tail end of um, lockdown. And uh, it's my personal belief that this is due to lack of visibility of the police. And, uh, and I think that's one of the drivers that I need to be pushing for from Lincolnshire Police. Yeah, we, Mark Jones, Conservatives, we, we hear constantly one of the issues people feel there are with is that you don't see police officers. And again, it feeds into the funding question. Does that make a difference? I mean, people, whenever you speak to people, say more police on the streets, surely it would make a difference. Yeah, I mean, the two elements to this, really. Of course, visible policing matters. There's no question in community policing matters, which is why the increase in officer numbers will help address that. The previous chief constable did make an operational decision to increase officer numbers and partly reduce some of the PCO, PCSO numbers. That's not a PC, uh, PCC decision. Um, I have committed that if successful next week, I will create a violence and harm reduction programme for Lincolnshire, akin to the violence uh, reduction units we've seen in some of the different areas around the country that get national funding for that. This will help tackle drugs offences, violence, sexual crimes, domestic abuse and weapons. And it's about finding those public health solutions, about working with schools, about making sure that our streets are safer and making sure we don't accept that violent crime has to be the reality. But this is behind closed doors as well as in the streets. In Lincoln, David Williams. I... Sorry, David Williams, Lincolnshire Independence. Is that the answer? No. Well, yes, in part. I mean, I don't disagree with what Mark said there, but I absolutely agree, Peter, with what don't disagree with what you said, Peter. The Police and Crime Commissioner has an absolutely pivotal role in addressing this sort of issue, violent crime. Now, I've done a lot of work over the last few years with uh, linking to youth, youth justice services, and I see a lot of the young people who are perpetrators of this violent crime. And the reason they are perpetrators is because they have not been given the level of support, the level of self-worth, the level of motivation, the level of all those things that we would like to assume that all young people get to give them a future, to give them something to aspire to that keeps them away from crime. Now, the Police and Crime Commissioner, the crime piece of his role, is absolutely at the centre of pulling all of these agencies together and addressing those wider societal and economic issues that are the cause of crime, frankly, People aren't born criminals, they become criminals by virtue of the circumstances they find themselves in. It's it's just let me just bring you back in that, because that was, can we back you there? I mean, look, I mean, this is handing off responsibility of your own actions to your surroundings. I mean, I completely disagree with this. If you're a criminal, you need to own your actions. You can't blame your environment. And uh, I'm sorry if people don't like the sound of that. I just don't, I just don't see that's the case. We've all been in difficult situations and we haven't all resulted to violence or crime because of those situations. Ross Pepper for the Liberal Democrats. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I just that that you have to look at the reasons why people turn to crime, whether it is addiction, whether it is poverty. There are causes of crime that drive people to commit crime. If you take that element away, you can stop crime happening. Um, it's simple and it's the best way and the most effective way to run a police force is by driving down the causes of crime. But, but does a and PCC you, really get the chance to influence those those factors that you're talking yes. about? You work with other agencies. It's a, it's about partnership. It's about working with others. It's, it's not just about the police force. It's about the whole community. It's about charities. It's about local authorities. Collectively, we can bring crime down together. And that's the important thing. We need to work together to do it. Can I just say, it, it's about leadership. It's about the PCC exactly. and leadership in these sorts of areas. And that comes back to, is it worth having a PCC? Well, frankly, if a PCC is not going to be showing leadership, is not going to be at the centre of these debates, the answer to that question is no, it's not worth having a PCC. 
So that's uh, the question there that came in. I think there's a question about regionalising uh, the police force, which we do have an element of already. Uh, we've got another couple of questions, and then we'll do the closing statements before we wrap up on this BBC Radio Lincolnshire Lincolnite debate with the people who want your votes as police and crime uh, commissioner. This is a question from Andrew uh, Rudd. Have the constabulary looked at collaboration with other neighbouring forces to save resources? If not, what are the candidate views in this? Mark Jones for the Conservatives. I think some elements in Lincolnshire, we've talked about violent crimes. So if there's a murder in Lincolnshire, for example, it goes straight to an East Midlands uh, sort of setting, Indeed, we have um, a special operations unit uh, at the East Midlands level. In fact, our chief constable until very recently was the head of that, tackling serious and organised crime, um, uh, murder, kidnap, extortion. Um, child exploitation, those kind of things at that regional level, where it makes absolute sense to produce efficient, effective services once across a region so that you've got the best access to technology, to information, um, to equipment. That is what happens. What we are getting even better at is other collaborations because we share a 40 mile border with Norfolk, we share borders with Humberside, we share borders with Cambridgeshire. We have to tackle rural crime across those areas. We equally need um, armed policing assets across those areas, training. So there's a huge amount of collaboration that goes on. Um, and it's absolutely vital to make sure that our police service nationally works as a network. That do, do you see more isolated. of this coming, Mark Jones? Do you see more of this coming? Well, I think I think technology sharing is really important because the, the, the often if we can all be on the same platforms, we can share information in real time that's of huge value in catching criminals. Um, and it, it saves time and effort for police officers, freeing them up to be in the community. I don't believe that we should have a regional police force. I think that would make it more remote from the public it serves. But nevertheless, in time, that may well happen. But at the moment, Ross there's Pepperford, no plans to do it. Liberal Democrats, uh, do you see that happening? Would you think it was a good idea? Let's have an East Midlands police force, for example. It would uh, be better for use of resources. No, I don't think an East Midlands police force is a good idea. We're a very large county as it is. But collaboration on certain projects that work for Lincolnshire and the other areas that benefit and save money, absolutely. And uh, Rosie Kirk, for, for, for Labour, uh, uh, more collaboration, more joining forces with those neighbouring uh, police forces. I think it's always good to cooperate. And so being a member and um, representing the cooperative party, I believe in cooperation. So, yes, we should work with other forces. But we should also um, consider, you know, the, the sort of lack of resources to our coastal areas. And um, we need to sort of consider these sort of areas that are just sort of left behind and uh, that's a big concern for my for me um and it's always important to work with with the other the uh, police forces i think that's very important and and, and share technologies um but i think that there is an argument sort of to look at more the rural and coastal areas and how we can sort of train our police um, um to be specific to those areas and understand those areas it was brought up at the um NFU um, a discussion that I was with uh, yesterday about actually, um, you know, with police that actually understood their areas, which is sort of something that, that, that Ross sort of, um, you know, mentioned. And I'm a great believer in that. So, yes, work with other police forces and, and you know, but also we need to look in Lincolnshire and how we can improve. And, and, and look after our, our areas, especially the coastal areas as well. So, David Williams, we're bringing you on this on Lincolnshire Independence. More collaboration, as we, we've heard Mark Jones say, he's back with us there. We um, uh, we already do a lot of this. Should we be doing even more? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Collaboration is an absolutely essential part of policing nationally and regionally. Um, should there be a regional force? Uh, I don't know. I know that there would be considerable resistance within the uh, the respective forces themselves, and probably for very good reason. And if you were to do that, the, port, the important thing, whether you're talking about regional or collaboration, command and control needs to be effective. And if you haven't got the command and control system in place, then it's not going to work and it's not worth doing. So logically, yes, there's, there's a sense in increasing, particularly if the government isn't going to level up this funding issue, if there are going to be inequalities of funding, greater collaboration is probably a way to go. Certainly something worthy of a serious consideration. So, uh, so uh, my jury would be out on that, and I would need to be 
in post exploring in more detail with our respective neighbours uh, about uh, about how they feel it could work more effectively. Uh, Peter, I speak from the uh, Reform Party. Uh, more collaboration needed or less, do you feel? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with David on this one. Until you're in post, what can you say? What is the current collaboration? Uh, and uh, I'm not going to say collaboration isn't good. I think nobody would say that. I think sharing resources is important, sharing of data. And I think the buying power of police forces working together is an obvious way of saving money as well. Buying in bulk is always going to be cheaper. Would you, would you uh, support an East Midlands police force rather than a Lincolnshire police force? I wouldn't because I'm for small government and I think uh, it's the local policing that really make a difference. But I think there's uh, areas to explore when it comes to buying powers. So if you look at tasers, all forces are purchasing tasers. Why aren't we buying as a central fund and bring, bringing all that buying power together to get the best deal? Um, I think there's a bit of common sense that needs to be applied there. Be aware of getting rid of a few PCCs, though, wouldn't it? Well, that would, that would I suppose, save for somebody there, <laughs> uh, says David. Now, on, on the, the, the funding issue, one of the issues that comes up a lot, we've already spoke about the salary issue. Uh, I just want to touch upon, because uh, we've had this comment coming uh, as well, about deputies, uh, whether you would all have a deputy or not. We've covered the issue about the, the business of, of whether you would take a pay cut or what or not, and there's a mixed reviews on that. Uh, Mark Jones, you do have a, a deputy, and it was controversial originally when you appointed them, but, but you believe it is the right right. Well, I don't think it was controversial. I, I was elected on a mandate that I was clear with the public that I would have a deputy and I then appointed one. And I, I want to be clear, I pay him the same as the special responsibility bonus that every executive county councillor receives, £18,000 a year. Um, it's going to become mandatory under the PCC review, that is clear. So it's important to understand that whatever people's wishes now, it will become mandatory to have one for succession planning and to make sure the job is done properly. There are over 61 boards um, that I sit on uh, locally, regionally, nationally to deliver strategic um, priorities for our county. And to suggest that I can then service 507 parish councils, district councils, county council, health boards, everything else, all by myself and do it properly and efficiently and effectively and hold the chief constable to account, I'm afraid he's pie in the sky. Everybody here had the opportunity to speak to the chief executive of the OPCC and the chief constable. Had they done that, they would know about regional collaboration, they'd know what the office did, and they would know how vital a deputy was. Rosie Kirk for Labour, will you have a deputy if you're elected? No, I definitely won't have a deputy. It's an unelected position. Um, Mark said it wasn't controversial. Sorry, but the police and crime panel weren't didn't agree with him at the time when he decided to appoint this person. Um, that money, eighteen thousand, should be put into rural areas, and it accumulates after a few years. So, well, what about Mark's um, argument is that you can't get round the big county, Lincoln, and serve it with Lincolnshire like Lincolnshire without a deputy? Well, of course you can. I mean, I'm prepared to do that job. I, I, I don't understand that he's saying these kind of statements because. Um, is he saying he, he's just not able to do that because it's such a big job? Well, I think I'm capable of doing that, so I don't need an elected deputy. Um, no. so, so, Peter, I great for the Reform Party, and you don't think there should be a police and crime commission, so I'm guessing you don't think you would have a deputy. Yeah, I'll be reviewing all the roles within the Police Crime Commissioner Office, not just the deputy role. And... Uh, David Williams for Lincolnshire Independence, Deputy. Oh, yeah. this, this topic has been the most popular, or maybe the most unpopular, of my blogs about whether I would have a deputy. Yes, I absolutely would, in case it's been lost on anyone. I am male, middle aged, um, have a certain uh, view of the world. Uh, I agree with much of what Mark said in terms of the scale and scope of the job, but for me, the key point here is engagement with communities, relating to communities and communities being able to relate to you as well. Unlike Mark, I would not appoint a deputy on the basis of a political um, uh, feature of their background. I would want a woman to be my deputy. Because I think it is absolutely crucial. Peter, you're shaking your head about this, about a, a, a deputy, a woman deputy. Yeah, I mean, what happened to hiring the best person to the job? Why do we have to bring in race? Why do we have to bring in sex? Look, we hire the best people for the job. We should be hiring the best police officers for the job. We should be hiring the best staff 
in any position that you're looking for, who cares if about for race, this person, for sex, this one, we or gender? Through a democratic process, we would be doing it through a proper application process where our credentials, our backgrounds, our achievements, our skills will be taken into account. It's, David, isn't That's it better to, what to let? Is about. Isn't it better to, to give the, the people a democratic choice rather than it being in, in, in as you suggest, on on the, the the abilities in a CV? Sorry, I, I missed that. Aren't the public doing that anyway by deciding who they want by looking at what you've all got to say and what your experience is? is? Well, the interesting thing is, in most of our material, very few of us have actually put up our full career history. I know I haven't, because other things, I think, have tend to be more important to the public about the sorts of questions we've had this evening. I think my whole point about the deputy, as I said, Mark has very good points there in terms of the scale of the job, the scale that the job should be. But also, bear in mind, this role is about being representative of the communities you serve. One bloke, one pale, male, stale, white bloke can't be representative of a complete community. And I would want somebody who brings a different dimension and a different perspective to my thinking and the setting of the agenda for Lincolnshire Police Force. I think um, that's massively important when we talk about engaging with the communities. Ross Pepper for the Liberal uh, Democrats. Would you have a deputy? And, and, and Peter there is arguing that people are fed up with this sort of PC appointments of, of, of people into these roles. Well, he's entitled to his opinion. I personally disagree. Um, but in terms of a deputy, I, it's most likely that I would have a deputy if I was elected, purely because you can't be in two places at once and it is a very large role. Well, thank you for all for taking part in the debate. We're now going to go to our closing statement. Um, obviously, it's not a normal debate. Hopefully, you feel you've been able to all chip in and have a thing. Obviously, it's much easier if we're all in the same room together rather than this sort of celebrity square setup that we've got here. And hopefully, uh, people sort of just jumping in and out, uh, unfortunately, with the technicals. We've done our best with that. But, but, but hopefully, you've got a flavour of all the different candidates and their views and uh, what you can expect if they were your police and crime commission. Obviously, your decision uh, comes next week. Uh, what we're going to do now is going to go in reverse order for the closing statements. Uh, we obviously drew these because it was the easiest and, and the, the fairest way to do it. So we're going to start first of all uh, with his closing statements. Remember, the closing statements are limited to 60 seconds uh, with David Williams from the Lincolnshire Independence. Over the past hour and a half, you've heard about our priorities or some of our priorities, what we think we can deliver and why we want to do this role. But have you heard anything that convinces you that any one of us actually has a vision for policing in Lincolnshire? Is there anyone who hasn't relied on promises or pledges that they may or may not deliver? Can you identify a candidate for who this role is more than just a political opportunity and who will have an approach that, that is more than just a to-do list? Has any one of us persuaded you that what you think matters and that Lincolnshire's police and crime plan should be your plan and not the police and crime commissioners? Is there a candidate who's put raising public's trust and confidence in the police at the centre of their strategy? If you can think of any one of us for whom you can say yes to those questions, then I really would encourage you to vote for him. David Williams for the Lincolnshire Independence. Uh, let's go to Rosie Kirk from Labour with her closing statement. The financial state of our force constitutes nothing less than an emergency for whoever takes on the role. We need more funding and we need a PCC who can offer real solutions to our dwindling police force. Mark Jones wants you to accept that officers are less well funded than their colleagues everywhere else in the country. Mark Jones wants you to accept that if you are a worried G4S worker who has served on your force for years, you are likely to go through an enforcing scheme that may need to be fired as soon as it's legally acceptable. Mark Jones wants you to accept cronyism on putting his maintenance as a deputy despite the warnings of an independent panel. I will remove the unelected deputy. I'll take a pay cut of 25,000 and focus on community policing. Fundamentally, I'm asking you to accept that we have to make Westminster pay and we need to vote for change and you need someone that's going to fight for you in all the parts of Lincolnshire and I feel that I'm that person that can do that for you. Thank you. That's Rosie Kirk from Labour with the closing statement for the Conservatives, Mark Jones. We've heard the bleak outlook that some people would paint about Lincolnshire Police. The fact is, Lincolnshire Police has come a long way since I was elected. Record recruitment of officers, more technology, more time spent in communities. Of course, there's a lot more work to do, but this is a three year term, not a four, not a five. There's three years to make a difference. I've already got the connections, the credibility, and I've got the plan to deliver. 
You've got to be able to hit the ground running in this job. Wasting time getting up to speed is simply not an option. Next week, we need to get this job done, and I can do that. Mark Jones for the Conservatives. Let's hear the closing statement from Peter Eskreep from the Reform Party. Thank you. Without taking risks, nothing changes. I'm not afraid to fail, and I'm not afraid to ask questions or give answers. I'm here to put everything into this job and give the people of Lincolnshire the PCC they paid for. The decisions I'd make as PCC will not please everyone. They will not be based on the Twitter mob's demands with the aim of, or with the aim of winning the next election. I'm here to do what's best for Lincolnshire people. Whether you like Pete from North Hickham, who's worried about wildlife crime, or Lynn from Lincolnshire, who's concerned about the new police crime sentencing court bill, or Roy from Barraby, who's concerned about cycling deaths due to road safety, my job will to ensure that your voices are heard and your voice taken into consideration. Sometimes we won't necessarily share the same views, like Alison from Louth, who wants to see the police commit to having a zero net carbon emissions in the next four years, but I will still make your voice heard and take your considerations into view. Voting for a politician for police crime commissioner is no longer your only option in this election. So I'll ask you to think outside the box and vote for change. Peter Esri from the Reform Party. And finally, with his closing statement, Ross Pepper for the Liberal Democrats. Next Thursday is your election. It's your vote. You will choose who will occupy the role for the next three years. You, the person who will be elected will be your person in that job. If I was to be elected, I would be your police and crime commissioner, and you would effectively be my boss. I will be working for the community of Lincolnshire to deliver a police and crime plan that actually tries to prevent crime before it happens, not be reactive and try and fight crime as it happens. We need to have a better system. We need to actually deliver a crime prevention plan for Lincolnshire. And we need to do this together. It is our plan. It is our Lincolnshire. Remember, it is your vote and whoever is elected serves you. Thank you. Ross Pepper for the Liberal Democrats. So, so you've heard all the candidates, the five people who want to be in that role. Uh, you get your say now, of course, next Thursday at the ballot box when Lincolnshire goes to the polls. Uh, this is the one of the things that you can vote for, along with the, the Lincolnshire County Council elections. And also there's a couple of districts as well where you can vote. Uh, just to mark your card about what else you can see about this debate. Of course, we've been doing this jointly here at BBC Radio Lincolnshire uh, with our friends at the Lincoln. I, they will continue to have uh, more reaction on the, their site. And here at BBC Radio Lincolnshire, you can join, uh, join Sean Dunderdale for the breakfast show tomorrow uh, where he'll be playing some great music he'll be talking to people in the about all sorts and of course we'll be reflecting tonight's uh, debate uh, thank you very much for joining us i hope we've helped shed a bit of light in these unusual circumstances having to do it in this way on what all the candidates stand for and what they would do if they get that job now that decision is for you good night <laughs>